Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you four secret production techniques in Ableton Live. These techniques aren't often talked about, but they can really make an impact on your tracks. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more Ableton content coming up. And if you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out the beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. And make sure to also check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All right, so let's get started. And first of all, we've just got an ambient swell pad. Let's just give this a quick listen. Very basic pad, nothing crazy going on here. And we're just going to be adding simple sidechain compression like this. We would usually just do it like this. So we have a kick on the second track, by the way. This is the drum synth kick, really amazing device here. It's got a quite a long tail. Let's try side chaining to this. Our side chain is quite long, so, and we might want to make it a bit faster. And the often overlooked technique here is using the EQ on the side chain signal. So what I tend to do is just use the high pass, choose the upper frequencies of the kick drum to choose just the transient, because most often the higher we go in the frequency spectrum, the shorter the kick is going to be. So the long sub lasts for quite a long time. If we now take a look at, for example, below 300 hertz. You can see the sidechain signal, it's quite long. I just froze the track on the drum synth and let's just go up with the frequency of the high pass. And you can see it's quite a very sharp sound now. If you want very dynamic ducking, it's very easy to just use the high pass and choose the speed of your side chain this way. So if we, for example, want to move back down and just add a longer side chain, we can just back down with the frequency. You might want to tweak the threshold now because the sound not only gets longer, but also more of the sound goes through it, causing more gain and then more gain reduction on our compressor. But yeah, uh, we can easily fix this with adjusting the threshold. So that's a very quick technique, which I don't think is that often used and make sure you are using the sidechain compressor to your full advantage. All right, so technique number two is going to be side chaining with the multi-band dynamics and this is really really awesome we've got the same deal here just the drum synth kick very short this time and what we have set up on another track is uh, a synth which basically is playing two things a bass line and an arp on top so the bass line sounds like this and then the arp on top is of this Let's say we want to just duck the bass and leave the high frequencies, so the ARP, unchanged. We can easily do this now with the multiband dynamics, but we just need to separate the frequencies in the right way. So all we want to duck are the low frequencies, and here I've chosen a below 300 hertz. This would be our bass, so mostly the sub actually. And if we enable the side chain now, we can just choose the kick and you can hear the ducking. We can even preview this side chain. The only downside of this is that we don't get additional EQ on the side chain itself. But this gives you a lot of possibilities because now if we hear the entire signal, the highs and mids are unchanged. And you can even see it visually. The bass is pumping, but the highs just stay unchanged. And that's amazing. And uh, yeah, usually we would require three compressors on three different channels. Here it's very, very easy to just do this with multiband dynamics. Let's take a look at the third technique for today. And what we have is the drum rack. And uh, it's a very, very simple MIDI pattern right here. So let's just give it a quick listen. 
We have some acoustic samples, acoustic kick, acoustic snare and hat, and we're playing a simple drum beat. So by default, when you drag things into the drum rack, basically you get some simplers loaded up like this. You could try placing effects right on each of the samples, then you can place them right here. You can try putting effects on top of the entire drum rack, doing this, basically putting effects like I have utility right here. You could also try routing different tracks, for example, here into some return tracks. For example, here we have reverb and delay. But what's also amazing is the ability to have sends and returns inside the drum rack itself. What we need to enable is this view right here. And here we have the chains. And now when we click this, we have a few more buttons towards the bottom. We've got the ins and outs, we've got the sends, and we've got the returns, right? So on the first one, we have reverb. On the second one here, we have saturation. And on the third one, we have delay. You can use this sends view right here. And the ins and outs are not necessary for this. You can, for example, take the kick, put it through the reverb. We could also, for example, put it through the saturator. All of these return tracks, these have on and off buttons right here. So we had this slap disabled. If we now take a look at it, Okay, so let's listen to all of this. And now if we disable this, I think it's gonna be a difference. And we could also A, B this, and this is actually another technique that is not that often used. We could map, for example, one of the keys here to the on and off buttons of the utility and of all of our return chains. And that's just to use this utility as a gain normalizer. I'm just going to make sure now that I'm not judging the sound that it's better just because it's louder. Let's just compare the gain. Okay, so we have quite similar gain now and we can compare That's without the return tracks. And now let's turn these on with gain normalization. And it's quite simple. And this also allows you to save a little bit of that precious CPU. If you are using the return tracks, if you have reverb for drums, you can just have a single effect for most of your drums. And then also using these return tracks on the drum rack allows you to get a more cohesive sound because doing the same processing on many different uh, drum sounds. And in this way, you are sort of placing them in the same room, so to speak. Okay, so let's take a look at the last technique for today. We have just a hi-hat sound. Sounds like this. We just have some velocity applied here. But what we can also do is add expression control and make the expression control take our velocity information. So in our case, it's going up and then going down and assign this velocity onto the attack and onto the decay, right? So this one is going to the decay and this one is going to the attack. And listen how this hi-hat now, the open hi-hat, turns into a closed hi-hat by just tweaking the decay. At the beginning, when the velocity is low, it's uh, almost like a closed hi-hat, and then it beautifully opens up and gets louder when we go up with the velocity. And this is really nice. The expression control, if you map it especially to decay and the attack, can give you a lot, a lot of expression on the hi-hat itself. You can create different randomized settings, for example. We could completely randomize this. In this way, we get much more of a natural feel because usually the hi-hat has a little bit of that variation in the length of the sound. And with the expression control, it's really easy to do. All that's needed is really just taking the target here, assigning it to the decay, and then just tweaking the XY pad. Like this, it goes from zero to the maximum with this curve, and you can also bend this curve. So just by mapping it onto the right parameter, tweaking the parameter itself, and just messing around with this XY pad,
pad right here, this can give you a lot of expression just with a single sample. So if you want to make your drum sounds more realistic and you are already using a bit of velocity, which is most MIDI patterns, you can also use this velocity for some more additional embellishments like automation of attack and decay. You might also use it on the filter, so maybe opening up the filter when the velocity goes higher. You might also need to mess around with amount of velocity here. Velocity and volume, uh, the higher we go here, the more the velocity is going to increase the volume as we basically have a higher velocity. That would be the last technique for today. The expression control is one of my favorite devices and make sure to use it, especially if you are creating realistic sounding drums. All right, I hope you'll find this video on secret production techniques in Ableton useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with lots of start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out the beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All links you'll find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write a comment and I will see you in the next ones.